Hello there! My name is Tanner, and I'd like to welcome you back to my YouTube channel. Why, yes, as a matter of fact, I do have a cat sitting on my lap, and now I can't move. Anyway, for those of you who haven't already seen my Fantasy Hybrids video, link up in the cards and in the description down below, I have created my own fantasy world, and I have a website that's based on that world. The link will be in the description. Now, I'm currently working on a Dungeons & Dragons-esque role-playing game based on that world, and for December, I plan on talking about some characters from that world that I created. However, I figured it would be a good idea to talk about the various aspects of my fantasy world, such as the lore slash story, the various character types, the magic system, not that there's much of a system, etc., before I get into these characters that I created. So for the next couple of videos, I'm going to be creating a series talking about my world as a whole, starting with the lore and the various types of characters. So without further ado, here is My Fantasy World, Part 1. Many, many, many years before the events of this story, in what we once called modern times, the various creatures and races once thought to only reside in myth and legend revealed themselves to those of the mortal population, which then led to the War of Magic. Myths and mortals were pitted against each other, each side vying for dominance over Earth, and many lives on both sides of the war were lost. It wasn't until the peace laws were drafted and signed by the leaders and representatives of both the mortal and magical communities, that the war finally ended, and the world entered a new age. These days, magic is fairly commonplace. You can find books about magical theory and mythical bestiaries in bookstores. You can buy potions and potion ingredients in marketplaces. And magical beasts are found in the same pet shops and adoption centers as mundane beasts. Members of both the magical and mortal communities also work, live, and play together in peaceful coexistence, at least for the most part. There are still some on either side who think they're superior, though these supremacists are usually sorted out. Though the various lands and countries have remained separated by oceans, magical means of transportation, such as broom cycles, basically a hoverbike broomstick hybrid, ships that can fold up to fit in your pocket, magic carpets, and even self-sustaining portals have connected them more than ever. Also, for the most part, though the names of the countries themselves have changed, they essentially remain the same. Though the various characters in my fantasy world vary wildly, they usually will fall into one of seven different categories, the first one being demi-myths, a word that I created. Now, demi-myths are the offspring of one mortal parent, and one parent who is a mythical being, mythical beast, or hybrid thereof. For example, someone who's the child of a human and a dragon, or human and elf, or human and dwarf, you get the idea. Now, these will vary depending on their magical parent. However, they do have one thing in common which is the ability to switch between human form and magical form at will. Now, most demi-myths just call themselves demi-myths, but there are other names for those who are a little bit more specific. For example, we have the changelings, which is an umbrella term for anyone who's half human, half fey, whether half fairy, half elf, half genie, half leprechaun, half dwarf, etc., the Dampier, which are half-human, half-vampire. The Dragonborn, which are half-human, half, well, dragon, obviously. And the Goliaths, which is another umbrella term for anyone who's half-human, half-giant kin. Half-true giant, half-argus, half-hecatonchiri, half-cyclops, etc. Now, the second group are the hybrids, which is fairly self-explanatory. These are the offsprings of two magical beasts and or beings. For example, half leprechaun, half banshee, half dragon, half unicorn, half werewolf, half aklut, you get the idea. 
Now, unlike their demi-myth counterparts, hybrids don't usually possess two different forms, with the exception of those who are part werebeast. However, like demi-myths, most hybrids merely call themselves, well, hybrids. But there are others who call themselves other things, depending on their specific parentage. Now, I made a whole nother video covering that subject, which, again, link in the cards and in the description. Category number three are the demigods, who are beings that, in one way or another, are related to the various immortals. Now, to clarify, when I use the term immortal, I mean those beings who were, at one point or another, worshipped as gods and goddesses, but who decided long, long ago that they no longer want to be worshipped, but rather respected and or feared, depending on the temperament of the individual. Now, immortals are, in fact, well, immortal, hence the name, but they're not truly human, but neither are they truly divine, if that makes sense. Now, in my world, there are two different types of demigods those that are the offspring of one immortal parent and one non-immortal parent, human or otherwise, or someone who is born among non-immortals, again, human or otherwise, but for some reason or another were adopted and raised by the immortals themselves. Now, demigods, whether half-blood or raised, as I prefer to call them, have some of the powers that their immortal parents possess, such as children of Poseidon having the ability to control water, children of Thor being able to control thunder and lightning, children of Bastet tending to have cat-like abilities, you get the idea, as well as some abilities unique to demigods themselves, such as the ability to understand their parents' native language, for example, Greek, Norse, Egyptian, Gaelic, etc. Category number four are the storyborns, which are the offsprings of the various stories, a term that I coined for the various storybook and fairy tale characters we all know and love. For example, we could have the son of Beauty and the Beast, the daughter of Fairy Godmother, the child of the Frog Prince. You get the idea. Now, I bet you're wondering, but Tanner, how can these stories still be around and have children? Well, I'm glad you asked. You see, in my fantasy world, the stories are effectively immortal with a catch. Stories will effectively only be alive as long as the respective, well, stories are still being told and retold and retold. Or if you want to get poetic about it, they will live only as long as their stories still begin with Once Upon a Time and still end with Happily Ever After. Category number five are the mages, which are essentially humans that are able to use magic and cast spells. Now, I'm going to cover how magic works in my world in another video in this series, but to summarize, all magic comes from one source, but mages and other spellcasters tend to specialize in a certain type of magic, such as water magic, fire magic, nature magic, music magic, etc. Category number six are the riders, which are beings, human or otherwise, that have bonded with a magical creature called a mount and have gained powers from that specific bond. Now, riders are the closest thing that I have on this list to a D&D class, and it is somewhat similar to specifically the warlock class in the fact that riders get their powers from their bond with a mount, and warlocks get their powers through their pacts with a patron. Other than that, they're two completely different things. Now, when a rider and a mount form a bond with each other, a couple of things tend to happen. One, the rider and the mount gain the ability to communicate with each other through thought. And two, the rider himself will have a mark on one of their palms as a symbol of that bond, which takes on a different form depending on the mount. For example, the mark of a dragon rider will take on a different shape than, say, the mark of a unicorn rider, or an aklut rider, or a griffin rider, etc. Also, when the bond is formed, later on, a rider is gifted a bracer, a special armband which allows them to store their special rider armor and rider weapon, 
both of which also differ, depending on both the mount and the individual. And finally, we have category number seven, the magical beings. By far the simplest category to explain, these are the pure blood members of the magical community. So, like, the offspring of two forest elves, two dragons, two minotaurs, etc. And there we have it! That was part one of my series detailing my fantasy world. If you like this video and you want more, please give this video a like and subscribe down below so you don't miss any new videos. Also, if you have any ideas for any future videos, leave your thoughts in the comments down below, and it might just happen. Alright, well that's all the time I have for this video, so I'll see you all next week with part two of this series. See you then!